All right, everyone, Twitter has decided to flee the battlefield. Jack Dorsey deciding not to wage the fight Zuckerberg has to wage right now, where the Democrats are pretending to be pissed at him because of political ads on the platform. Uh, see, seeing Hillary Clinton ramble about Facebook choosing to allow misleading uh, political ads on Facebook is really, really funny because Hillary Clinton is the queen of misleading ads. And so most of hers would probably be banned under the rules that she herself is encouraging. The thing is, of course, she's not running, so she doesn't give a fuck. She doesn't care what happens to the other Democrats or the Republicans or anyone else in the world, but her and, and maybe Bill and Chelsea and Huma Abedin some days, depending on how pissed she is. Uh, here's the thing, though. Jack Dorsey normally is like the weed-throttled, you know, meditated once thought he was enlightened because of that uh, tech uh, leader. And so mostly he makes bad decisions. He does dumb things and then tries to justify them. Like when, when he went on Joe Rogan, um, and Joe Rogan like bent over backwards for him. People were so pissed he had to get Tim Pool on there to grill him. He's like, well, no, I, I'm abdicating my responsibility. Here, Tim, go get him. And Tim Pool makes him look basically shit his pants. It was funny because Jack Dorsey agreed like five or six times in that entire segment that he had messed up and was doing the wrong thing, and they've changed nothing, basically, since then. There's a reason for that, and it's usually it's green and in paper form. Sometimes it's Bitcoin. Uh, <laughs> here's the thing. Twitter is actually making the right call here. The idea that there's any possibility that Twitter or any other tech firm can properly police what is right or wrong in political ads is clearly wrong. Here's the extension of that, though. Here's the interesting thing nobody is thinking of. Jack Dorsey is admitting that Twitter is not capable of doing that. We're not able to look through political ads and say yes or no, they're accurate or not. We can't say whether they're misleading. Half the time, the claim is subjective. How the hell are we supposed to do that? We can't police the ads. It's impossible. Then how is it that Jack Dorsey, at the same point, is able to police users who are making political points to determine whether those things are misleading. And by the way, Google and all of these other sites, they do want to police for misleading content. Google openly, Apple and some of these groups. Facebook, apparently Zuckerberg has decided he doesn't care. Zuckerberg is trying to find balance in the world, and he's saying, look, I've got so much money, all I want is money. People are getting pissed off about censorship, so I'll censor less. It's actually really funny, because it's all about money as well for him. Jack Dorsey has decided not to even play ball. He's not joining a team. He's saying, I don't want to be on anybody's team. I don't want to be playing this game because it's a terrible game where I can only lose. Yeah, actually, that's totally correct. But it's still funny to see the hypocrisy when Dorsey doesn't apply that same logic to normal user behavior. If I'm talking about politics, especially current events uh, like, like a shooting or something, I can get banned off of Twitter for saying something that is subjectively judged by other people to be offensive. It doesn't have to be objective in any measure. What Jack Dorsey is saying is that some random moderator, usually outsourced to Southeast Asia, is capable of making that determination, but a group of them couldn't make the determination for a political ad. I disagree with that. The volume of political ads is a lot less. The, the, the number of people making them is a lot less, and by default, most of them are going to be misleading, so you might as well just preemptively ban them all and just, you know, screen them through and allow a few of them. The reason that he's not doing this is as follows. I can tell you why. Beyond just, well, it's, you know, bad business, it'll lose money. That's true. But why? Because most political ads are full of BS. And he doesn't want to have to explain to his fellow Democrats, which is basically what he is, hey, 90% of your ads I had to ban off the platform. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's just the way that it is. Especially when you consider the fallout that could happen. Imagine Jack Dorsey does allow ads and polices them. So the Zuckerberg approach is he allows ads, he's not going to police them, supposedly. And that's a big supposedly. It depends on who Facebook determines is a legitimate candidate or a legitimate political party. If I say I'm running for governor or something, you think my ads that I could put out there, and probably wouldn't even be allowed on the platform, do you think that they won't be policed? Of course they would. But if I slap an R after my name, if the GOP or the DNC decides I'm a good dude, it's okay. Maybe the LP. But only if they do more Bill Weld and less Ron Paul. Then it's okay on Facebook. So Zuckerberg says you can have ads. I'm not policing them. Google says you can have ads. We will police them. Jack Dorsey says we're not going to have ads at all. Specifically, here's the problem. 
Let's say that he did allow that. Most of them would be would run afoul of the policing, as some of them will with Google, by the way. He will then have to do one of two things. He'll either have to make it clear, hey, I'm a lame establishmentarian and I'm going to allow Hillary Clinton but not Tulsi Gabbard. Or he has to go strictly by objective accuracy, in which case the mainstream candidates will be the ones whose ads are fucked. Trump's ads might be favored over the ads of whoever the Democratic nominee is. And then they'll start calling Twitter a far-right cesspit or something. I've seen people claim that Twitter is a far-right platform recently, which it boggles the mind. How can you... You can't possibly be far-left enough to think it's a right-wing platform. You couldn't even be an outright communist and think that. You would have to be the left of Mao Zedong to think that. But it's actually the way that some people think. He's not going to go out of his way to appease that tiny outrage mob that tends to flag ads all the time, habitually make his life difficult. He's just saying, nope, no ads. You're not going to be able to flag what's not there. Fuck it. He doesn't care anymore. Part of it, I think, is that Jack Dorsey is watching Twitter stock nervously. He's like, yeah, I don't want to rock the boat too much. I just don't, he just doesn't want to fight any more pitched battles when he's the most vulnerable of the tech firms. Facebook, a lot bigger than Twitter. Google, it's an empire. Apple and all of these other groups. Twitter sort of stands alone. It's a, re it's a really big, but it's not quite on the same order, and it's an echo chamber. He can't appease the average Twitter user because they skew so far left. He would not be able to ban a single ad by a Democratic candidate without getting called the next Goebbels. So he doesn't want to play ball with them. He doesn't want to play nice with his own fans. It is funny, though. I mean, to see him make the claim that it's because it can't be policed when he polices all other behavior on the platform habitually and people get banned for nothing all the time on Twitter, that's, that's a cop-out. The real reason is all about money and the fact that he wants to get invited to uh, Chelsea Clinton's next wedding. That's about all. Peace out.